Hey guys, it's Daniel. The following is a clip from my interview with Gorillaz and Muse touring bassist Morgan Nichols. If you want to see the full interview, the link is available below. So just switching gears for a sec, I just remembered, um, if I'm not mistaken, you played with The Who during the Olympics in London, is this correct? Yeah. What was yeah, that yeah. like for you? What was That must have been a cool experience. Uh, that, that was a big old gig. Yeah, yeah. That, was, uh, that was a really big old gig. Um, yeah, that was a one-off. And my dad did it as well. He was um, singing backing vocals. That's so cool. Uh, so <laughs> and yeah, yeah, a lot of funny stories about it. I mean, obviously, it was just the one one uh, one show but you know no pressure and all that yeah, you know only, none whatsoever. <laughs> but what was great was actually the um, muse supported um the who for that show so um so you know it was quite it's nice to see them sort of in the background off stage you know and uh waiting to come on at the end like for to do a big sort of bow at the end and um uh so was, there was something slightly ironic and entertaining about um them having to come, come onto the stage after me, <laughs> you know, but um, but there was lots of funny, so many funny things happened that day. I mean, it was absolute chaos on, on another level. There was all sorts of stuff, but there was all sorts of characters. There were so many characters there that day. It was, uh, it was great. You know, it was a real sort of, you know, who's who. How I got the gig was that my, my dad's been MD and been working with the band for a long time. They're sort of family friends, go back to the 60s. My mum went to art college, Ealing Art College with uh, Pete Townsend's wife. That's so cool. I grew up with his kids and stuff. So they've always been a sort of part of the family, really. So, I mean, I could imagine playing for the Olympics. The security must have been crazy for that particular gig. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there was uh, army stuff going on, all sorts. Um, we went, we couldn't. There was no bar open until God knows what time, until after the gig, I think. Um, so we were going slightly mad by the, by the time the Who went on. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, no, it was a great day. Yeah, memorable because it was such a high profile thing. Um, most of us had to do um, record a, a backup tape, even though we we're playing live. We had to record backup, um, uh, if in, you know, in case everything went wrong. Uh, so we, it was quite it was quite high end as far as sort of um, a fail making sure it's a fail safe thing um, show. It wasn't your normal show, put it that way. And I remember we did um, we had to do in the studio. Um, uh, so I had to record we, we, we recorded with Zach and Pete and Roger um, like basic backing tracks just as emergency sort of. So we were queued up for them in case everything went down. And um, I remember doing my generation. And on the original um, track, uh, Pete was saying that there was um, hand claps during the, hand, uh, during the, you know, and, he, and so um, it was like, oh, should we let's let you know, let's put, let's record some hand claps and get some people to do hand claps and let's have them on on there just in case. And so we were recording some hand claps, and um, but they didn't sound very good. And hand claps were notoriously, they just don't. It's like you need like you know like about twenty you know a twenty piece sort of uh, choir to do hand claps properly. Anyway, so um, but it's always been a thing about in recording. I remember it. And so I said to Pete, I said um, there's there just me, Pete, and my dad doing this, and they sounded rubbish. And I said, well, look, you know, back in the day, apparently in Motown, you know, Motown days, you used to if you wet your hand, get a bowl of water and wet your hands, mm-hmm. and then clap. It makes um, it makes it sound a bit more clappy, you know, but it's louder and sort of you know makes more of a clapping sound. And Peter's like, oh, and my dad like, I never heard of that. It's like, what? and so he got the tape up in to sort of get some bowls of water. <laughs> and um, and Pete was like, so it sound better then? Yeah, just it to the engineer. He's like, no, Pete, it sounds shit. <laughs> and they were like, and I was like, to Pete, I can't believe you fell for the oldest gag in the play. And they were like, right, fuck off, right, so forget about the hand clap. Really funny. So, so yeah, we had a lot of fun on that. <laughs> that is so cool. Was there a lot of rehearsing prior to the show, or how did that go? It was just, I think we just did a day, actually, for that. Um, um, it was a medley of, of sorts. Um, there was, I think I, I got, I was given, um, given them uh, a breakdown of what, what to play uh, a, couple, a couple of weeks before. Uh, but to be honest, I could have walked in there and just done it blind. But I mean, I, you know, it's like, I've played those songs a thousand times. So, yeah. <laughs> it's more a case of um, um, worrying about what whether Pete would change his mind at the last minute. And I don't suddenly have to remember, you know, the whole of a quick one or something. And, and um, um at the drop of a hat you know which would have been yeah that would have been tricky but um yeah uh, but no it all works out and it's great and um yeah sort of family friends like i was saying and i played with i've just known zach starkey for a long long time um, cool. his sister is so his younger sister's godmother to one of my kids and um so we all go go you know go back quite a way so that was very comfortable to 
join in with Zach. Yeah. That is so cool. Did Ringo have anything to do with the show? No, 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 no. Just uh, just Zach for that one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So I mean, prior to a, again, we're just on the Who for a sec. Prior to the uh, Who show, like, do Roger and Pete is there a long warm up, or since they've been doing this for so long, do they kind of just jump right into it? Uh, well, when they do a live show, yeah. uh, when they do a gig, um, well, I've, um, they very much keep themselves to themselves. I think these days. I think um, you know, it's like most um, most bands just uh, think very much like um, keep themselves to themselves and um, and have their own dressing rooms and um, that's it. And you might there might be a bit of meet and greet stuff here and there, and and that'd be it. But if it's all pretty sort of pro, you know. Uh, you know, it's a professional sort of operation, all those sort of, those sort of yeah, things. Sure. The days of throwing the TVs out the window after the people. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> so, I mean, if you had, <laughs> is there any one memory you have of the the Who Olympic performance that is special for you? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I remember sort of having to sort of pinch myself a little bit um, walking out on the stage. And because um, it's such a... There's something about. I mean, it's just a lot of people, and it's not just the the stadium. It's. I mean, we've played big gigs before, and, and done big festivals like Glastonbury and and all these sort of things. You know, when there's probably more people at headlining Glastonbury, hmm. and that's must be like hundred thousands or something. But it's knowing that behind those cameras, there's, you know, the whole world. <laughs> like, you know, potentially it's. It's. Um, yeah, you have to kind of not think about it, but. Um, um, but no, the whole thing, the whole experience was, um, yeah, like I say, it ticks a lot of boxes and um, it's not something I'd want to do every day. <laughs> but uh, but no, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. Why and, was it- and it was nice to have my dad about, um, which was great. I think I've only played with him, been on stage with him a couple of times. And um, so it's funny to look over and see him yeah. uh, doing this. What a cool <laughs> experience. Yeah. 